was a little slow there starting out. So I'll be interested to see if this point, if they kind of take off a little quicker, uh, both JMU and WKU. So we should be starting up here in a second. We have just enough time for a word from one of our sponsors. Ben Subcheck, go. No, quit doing this to me. There's more people watching. Why? Perfect. And here we go. <laughs> wow. Again, number 37 really quick off the line. A little aggressive there. Kind of bumped into one of the JMU players. Well, he goes one for one. Why not? Yeah, I, I more meant the physical contact. He almost kind of fell over onto the guy. And I think we try to, we obviously try to discourage any and all physical contact between players uh, for obvious reasons, I think. Woo! Big Bird, not the same arm that he used to have, number 64, getting caught by JMU. Once again, I wish they had numbers on the front so I could call out names, but I just can't see them right now. 15, well, let's see, number 15, Joey Cordella making that catch for. Uh, 92 is the one there with the nice hair. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> ben Sizemore. <laughs> ben Sizemore has nice hair. I'll say it. I'm fine with that. So what you're going to see JMU do right now is they're going to, um, a lot of their players are up at the front waiting for U WKU to um, throw because of the shot clock, and they're just going to make catches because WKU does not have the arms that JMU does. They are, yeah, there's like no one for JMU except like three players outside the neutral zone right now, so they are definitely being the aggressors. Yeah, I agree, and, you know, it, it's working for them. Um, and, you know, this is exactly what I just mentioned. I think the Dukes have the toppers kind of figured out now. Um, and they're going to – even when Western starts to counter push, they didn't, they didn't go back a step. Well, they're, the Dukes are better catchers. They have stronger arms. I mean, nobody on the Dukes is afraid of a single arm on WKU, and when you have that uh, – you can just post up in this neutral zone, and it's and it's did then it have, becomes this game. Did but. have a catch there by the toppers? We did, yes. Number fifteen. Number fifteen. Of of the Dukes got caught. No, to toppers. Okay. Made the catch. Gotcha. I'm busy. A big series of pump oh. fakes there. Oh, number thirty-two for the toppers down. See a lot of smiles on JMU faces. I mean, when you're when you're in this position, it's just. It's an easy road to uh, to victory because you just get to stand up and be and be intimidating and just nothing WKU can do. Yeah, especially I'm, this first half with them on the uh, on the wall. I'm seeing a lot of the JMU players, uh, particularly over on their bench, looking up and kind of gesturing and pointing at the Townsend players as well. What are they like? You know, taunting them like this is you. This is you next? <laughs> I didn't this see, any, I didn't see any, like, simulated, like, you know, finger across the throat <laughs> kind of thing, no. I think uh, right now Nick Johnson just has to be hoping to get some good experience. He's got a very, very young team. I haven't seen some of these players before, so I think this might be potentially a first game for a lot of these players, and especially a first Nationals. And to play a team that's as high a caliber as JMU, you're just hoping to get some more experience you can build off of in the future. Got a message from Jeff Sorrells talking about uh, the toppers. I would like to see them go all out aggressive one point, even if it doesn't last long. You know, I'd kind of like to see that too. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, you have nothing to lose. And I think uh, maybe after halftime, if the toppers are down, you know, three or four, you might see them just start to play with reckless abandon because game's over at that point. Might as well have a little fun. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. You know, you try one strategy this half, and it's wow. not it's not working for you. You're not you're thrown from the back line, and it's just it's just not going to work that well against a caliber uh, team like Dukes. So, uh, you do the opposite. Completely throw them off of their game. Number 22, Wilhelm, does go down without looking. Nobody called a cross. Got to do that. It's dodgeball, people. Call crosses. Mm -hmm. Dukes falling asleep. Heck, this game. Number seven got it? No, seven toppers left. Ooh. It is loud in here, folks. So I'm here in the Bowling Green State and Michigan uh, State game to my right. A, a, a it's pretty, loud. Pretty, yeah, pretty definitive lead for Michigan State right now. They're up one point, only th uh, four BGSU players left. Uh, so that'll be, another, that'll be another interesting way to see how, you know, this bracket develops throughout the day. Another catch. Tyler Wilhelm back, and Taylor Wilhelm back in the game. And you know, I'm, Ooh. I'm, I'm looking down That's at the right. topper's bench right now, and you know they're looking, they're, they're looking a little upset. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also seeing they're doing some, you know, they're doing some talking, they're doing some pointing, like a little bit of strategizing. But this has got to be stressful for them because you know this is their home turf, this is their university. 
Well, they're not, they're not checked out of the game, which is what you like to see. They're in the game. They're calling out crosses. They're calling out the shot clock. So they're staying in the game. Like I said, you're, you're building experience right now for these young guys. Number four goes out. Man, number nine on WKU is uh, put the team on his back. Sort of. Yeah, Dominique, yeah, he's a uh, fun kid to watch because he's so aggressive. The only one who's, un who's willing to just, I'm just going to walk and I don't care, you have three balls, I'm going to walk up to you and I'm going to throw and I'm going to dodge you and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Ooh, bring it. Timeout called by Western. Thanks for the MSU update. Our pleasure. It doesn't look like anyone's streaming that, so we'll try to update the games that we can see. It looks like Grand Valley's up 1-0 on VCU, from what I can tell. Uh, it does look like that. It looks like Grand Valley is up 1-0 against VCU. Um, Central, Mission Central Michigan 2-0 against DePaul. DePaul. All right, and Michigan State just went up 2-0 against B uh, BGSU. So those are all of our current game updates. So we've got a quick timeout, which gives us time for another message from a sponsor, Ben Subcheck Go. This game's brought to you by Coconuts. They're still around. Coconuts. Like Big Jim's Pretzels. Are you an adult and still like deep pretzels? Might as well be Big Jim's Pretzels. Thanks, Big Jim's Pretzels, for uh, sponsoring us here. Gave us a, each a year's supply of pretzels, which turns out is just a handful of pretzels because adults shouldn't eat them anymore. It's for kids, it's just, really. It's, it's just breading. Salty bread. Yeah. Salty dry bread. I would like to say I do not like pretzels and Chex Mix. That is Perfect. See, that's Chex are the best part. Puppy chow. That's we how were, Chex should I, be we're done. We're supposed to be opinionated as broadcasters. I don't know if you should be doing that. I've already stated that I want, uh, I want Towns to win this whole tournament. So I'm not being paid, so I can have any opinions I want. <laughs> All right, and we're back to it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hot mics. Hot mics. Uh, hot, hot mics. I uh, want to let everyone know uh, with the number of players we have leaving, number of, alum of alumni getting on the road, we are probably only going to have one stream from each round. That will be us. We will try to keep you guys updated throughout the day, but unlike yesterday, it was impossible to schedule ahead of time since we didn't know who was going to be playing when. And a lot of players want to focus on the tournament uh, on day two, so we can't ask them to be live streaming games when they should be focusing on watching their opponents or getting their team ready to play. So we'll be streaming from every round, and we will keep you all updated as best that we can during uh, day two. That is indeed true. And uh, what we're going to try to do at the end of each of these games, we're going to try to get a quick word or two from the captain of each team. We're going to tack that on to the end of each broadcast. Uh, and then obviously for the, the games that we're not able to see, probably not here during the round of 16, but definitely during the, uh, the Elite Eight, uh, I want to try to talk to each, a captain from each winning team afterwards, so we can kind of start painting a picture of what our last couple of rounds are going to look like. Um, so let's see, what do we have in? Three in for the tops right now. Uh, so Jazzy, at what point, at, at what point does JMU need to kind of change their game up and start thinking about saving their arms? When, I mean, when you're up 2-0, do you start making that After change? this point. After this point? Uh, look like trapped against, Trap. yeah. So, so even called. JMU called out trapped against the ground. And that was not a trap. Once again, he needs to go all the way up to the line. I know it's intimidating because like four or five of uh, JMU's top throwers have a ball, but you still you can't throw from your half court and expect someone not to catch it because there's another one, and it's just it's going to go down like that for sure. All right, that's another point for JMU. Five minutes, 55 seconds left in the first half. JMU up 2-0, to zero, and we will be.